On today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to sharpen carbide. Hey guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. Really excited about this video. It's actually part two of the series of how to sharpen carbide, well I should say, of how to build a slow speed grinder to sharpen carbide. By California state law, now you guys know I moved to California. By California state law, you cannot watch this video until you watch the very first video. It's something with dealing with Hollywood and movie sequels and that kind of stuff. So if you live in California, you can't watch this until you've watched the other video, but I'll put a link to it so you can get to it and then come back. And that first video is how I built the slow speed grinder. Now I'm gonna show you actually how to use it. I've got three different types of carbide I use here in the shop. We have a carbide insert, we have lathe tooling with braze on carbide, and then we have a scraper. So this is gonna be a fun video and hopefully really educational because I'm gonna talk about some of the different design features that I put into this grinder. Okay. I wanna talk about the different types of discs we use. This is one of the questions I'm getting asked the most is what am I using as the sharpening surface? And it's actually these steel plates that are impregnated with diamonds and they come in all different types of grits. The grit that I'm using is, uh, actually I have three of them, it's 800, 1200, and 3000. The 800 being the coarsest and that's the one where I, I reshape the carbide into the geometry that I need. And of course, the 3000 is the one that does the final polishing and the real sharpening. And I've got these set up, so they're pretty easy to remove. I've just got a nut on here. And we got the plate. Now back here is an aluminum platinum or a plate, 3 8 7 inch thick is my guess. And that's exactly what I mount it to. Works out really well. I will say, I thought about gluing these two aluminum discs and having a series of discs available. And I'm still vacillating on that because I'm going through these discs pretty quickly. I'm going through them more because my experience of how to use this because you'll be sharpening and you get the tip up wrong and all of a sudden you cut a big gouge. So it's trying to figure it out. They're not very expensive. Do not get the cheapest ones on eBay, guys. Don't do it because I've done it. It's like they have the really fine grit on there with a uh, peppering of gravel, so they're unusable. This table here, I didn't talk about in the other video, it's actually set up to where I can move it in. Well, first of all, I can take it, move it out so I can get the discs off, but then I can bring it in as close as I can and just almost touch the disc itself. So when I'm grinding on this, the carbide doesn't accidentally slip inside. Here's something you may want to build for your shop, especially if you build one of these grinders, is you want to be able to have repeatable angles. So what I did here is I built a little gauge. I've got a five degree angle and a three degree angle on it. And this is for setting up the table. Now what's also great about having this is, you know, if it's off plus or minus a half a degree, it's not the end of the day, but I can use it on another grinder like that. So I can pre-grind there, come over here and have the exact same angle. Now, because of the way I've got it set up, these two lines are parallel and the angles are here, so I can have a negative angle, I should say a positive angle and a negative angle and get it either way so I can have a positive five or negative five or positive three, negative three. So I've already set up this table. So let's get into grinding some braised on carbide. Here's one, um, I love these things. They come from Harbor Freight, <laughs> you know. I think these are about $2 a piece. I don't have a problem with them. They work out really good. They're not as, probably as good as a real one, but they're only $2 a piece. So I think they're a great value. Now they do come in pretty bad shape. Okay, if you look at this, they have paint on them. So what I did earlier, I cleaned this one up over on the other grinder. What I wanna do first on this is I wanna sharpen, or I wanna say, I wanna lap this top first. And the reason is, is when I sh do the main edges, they actually become sharper this way. So let me turn this on. Now you can see the improvement on that. 
Still needs to be a little better. Um, I should have actually put the 800 grit on here first and then went to this, but we're trying to save some time. Next, since I already have the angle set up, I can simply come in here and polish out that edge. And you'll see the carbide that gets on the wheel, comes around to the top side, and then gets squeegeed off. So you know you're getting sharp is when you're seeing more of that. Check the edge. Oh, that's nice. Go the other side. Now, I like to sharpen the carbide with the wheel coming down on the top of it because carbide is incredibly hard. And if you go the other way, it'll actually peel off the edge. Think about using a table saw and going through plywood. One way the plywood splits out really well, or splits out really well, splits up. The other way, it really holds into the place. Well, carbide is the same way. So there we go. You can see the facets on that, how shiny that is. Now I've got a sharp corner. I can come in here. This is when you can actually destroy your wheel. I'm going to put a little radius on that. There you go. Brace on carbide sharpen. Very nice. Now let's talk about carbide inserts and sharpening them. Now you do realize if you sharpen them, you're changing the geometry, but it's already been changed because it's dull and unusable. If we look here, you can see by doing the fingernail test that this is not sharp. Let me show you what sharp looks like. See, I can peel off. Well, you can't do it with this braze on carbide. So yes, you are going to damage the geometry of this, but it's dull. It's already damaged. So let's sharpen this up now. There's different ways we can look at it, and you'll want to experiment in your shop how you do it. I'm just going to go right up against the edge, no table, and just dress this one flat side. So there you go. You can see that it doesn't take much to sharpen it. You can also sharpen it to where you see these facets on the top. See how that shines? I didn't do it on this because the centers are always really high and you actually need to grind them off on another grinder that's a lot coarser than this. But you can see this is just excellent how this sharpens it up. Couldn't be happier with these. And it's a great way to save a lot of money, especially if you're a home machinist. Okay, the reason I actually built this grinder was to sharpen scrapers. And scrapers are for scraping off little bits of metal to get something incredibly flat. And I've got a video coming out on this really soon on how to use a scraper and everything I've learned. Now, I'm not an expert, but I have learned a lot which I think you guys can benefit from. And working with one of these scrapers, we're gonna change the geometry of the table. And I'm gonna go to a positive three degrees. Now when you sharpen a scraper, you're actually getting to sharpen and make two edges at the same time. With the negative angle, you'll see how this works out. So I'm able to come in here, sharpen it up. See how that looks? Now because of the negative angle, I'm able to come in here, do the other side. I'm looking for the shavings. Boom. Sharp. As you can see, my goal here is to make it kind of like a roof. So now I can scrape, flip it over, scrape the other side, so I've actually got two sharpens at the same time. So there you guys go. That's the slow speed grinder, how to use it. I hope you guys are encouraged to build one. They're actually really simple. I made this one complicated. I'm gonna tell you a little trick. If you want to, you could actually just go as simple as two two by fours, press two bronze bushings in it, put a shaft in it, mount it to a piece of plywood, put a motor on it, and you're rocking and rolling. It could be that simple. You don't have to take it this far. So I encourage you to just put something together with whatever you have. Give this thing a try. So I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Also, if you want to see more things of building something cool and learning about metalwork, hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell so you get notifications of when the next video comes out. All right, guys. Until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks.